Hello, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you're joining us from. This is Jim McKeith, and welcome to Delphi's 27th anniversary celebration, birthday celebration for uh, building the future. Oh, that link is wrong. Hold on, let me fix that. <laughs> nice. <laughs> that is an old link. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Uh, joining me on the call in my webcam is not working. I might get it working here a little bit. We have Kyle Wheeler. He's general manager of Dev C Tools because he he likes C plus plus builder, even though he's still on here with his Delphi. Uh, <laughs> the typo. Uh, then Marco Cantu, product lead IDE and tooling and market error technologies. David Millington. Senior Product Manager in Marketer Technologies, Ian Barker, one of our fantastic MVPs, and of course myself, I'm the Chief Developer Advocate for Marketer, Jim McKeith. And a lot of great people online, actually I have a number of MVPs also online as well that will be chiming in through the chat too. So fantastic, thanks everybody for being part of this. A quick agenda. So I have a few things, actually, I had to take out Delphi on the blockchain for space. <laughs> we wanted to have as much of a conversation as possible, but also wanted to have some stuff we thought was interesting and exciting to share. And so here's kind of the agenda we have, but um, it's gonna, we wanna really focus as much as possible on conversation. So if you have questions or comments, put them in the chat and we will be addressing those either via text or in the uh, audio as well. For starters, we have the Ultimate Delphi ebook bundle, which I, was, I didn't get preloaded into the handout section. Hopefully, we'll have it loaded in the handout section. If not, we'll have a follow up email. But this is a collection of ebooks that we have available for everybody that's attending the webinar live that you can uh, get. A lot of great stuff here. And uh, so, hopefully, they'll show up in hey, the Jim, handout are you section. Are supposed to be sharing your screen at this moment? I'm I not am. seeing your screen if you are. Am I not sharing my screen? Yep. Oh, well, there we go. Let me go back to the screen share. I'm a visual learner. I need to see it. I appreciate you saying something. Well, I get, I get to see some uh, webcam, so there you go. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, there we go. Uh, I did the introductions already. And um, here's our agenda real quick. And here's the ultimate Delphi ebook bundle. So like I said, hopefully we'll have that added to the handout section here shortly. If not, it will be shared via email as well. But uh, Object Pascal Handbook, Delphi Alexandria Edition, Dependency Injection in Delphi by Nick Hodges. Oh, the Delphi Handbook, Object Pascal Handbook by Marco Cantu, Alistair Christie's Code Faster in Delphi, and then Nick Hodges' two books, Coding in Delphi and More Coding in Delphi. So. Hopefully everybody's read these, honestly. Um, but if you haven't, <laughs> that's kind of why we included it. It's like everybody should have read these, but if not, definitely make sure you, you read these. So you check those out. And if you're like me, go out and pick up the uh, physical books as well. I like having both. Uh, I read the physical books in bed, but when I'm sitting on my computer looking stuff up, the uh, ebook is great to have. Also wanted to point out just a few recent Delphi books. There was a lot of Delphi books came out in the last year. Um, and these these are in the last two years, I think. Maybe a little, a couple of them might have been a little more than two years. But these are the books that came out just in the last two years for Delphi. Uh, um, Holger Flick actually wrote all five of these in the last two years. <laughs> I don't know how he did that. Pretty amazing. Um, but yeah, the I do want to call out. Let's see, there's a couple here by Packet Publishing. Um, Andrea Maggie and David Cornelius's Fearless Cross Platform and Delphi GUI Programming. This one here by Dr. Kevin Bond is, I think, 2,000 pages total. It's just a massive, covers covers tons and tons and tons of stuff there. You can find out more information about these books at delphibooks.com. Uh, here's one writing uh, Interpreter and Object Pascal, Delphi MVC Framework. So lots, uh, lots of stuff there for you to read. Uh, definitely check that out. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Marco to talk about the Delphi and Windows 
app SDK Wind UI 3. Yeah, we wanted to do something special for this day. So we decided to release a um, demo that um, we've been working on in, in R&D. Um, the demo is focused on creating a user interface with uh, using the Win, WinUI 3 library, which is part of the Windows App uh, SDK. The Windows App SDK was released in November uh, 21, so it's relatively recent. And um, we had already some internal experiments. We have now a working demo written in Delphi. Um, I mean, the, the uh, 11 Alexandria release. And that is a starting point if you want to explore or, or play around with it. Um, as you'll see, it allows uh, defining user interfacing SAML or uh, just creating, creating objects uh, in code. Um, it's going to get out either later today or tomorrow as a demo in Get It. And also, I'm going to write a blog post that's basically going to have the README, which is fairly extensive, uh, plus possibly some, some additional information. Um, now, there is a prerequisite. Um, you need to install the Windows App SDK as a developer on your dev machine. That includes a DLL that you need to that you are, have the right to distribute with your application. Uh, plus, the end user needs to have the Windows app um, runtime loader. Sorry. Um, yeah, this is, uh, I think I'm, I, I'm, uh, I wrote that slightly wrong. Anyway, there is a runtime that you need to distribute um, that your customers need to have on their machine. Uh, if they have Windows 11, they're most likely covered, but they have Windows 10 they might need to in install the Windows SDK, uh, install a runtime. Plus, there is this loader in the SDK that you need to distribute with the application. If you have done anything with um, um, Edge, Edge, T, T Edge browser, the, the T Edge view component, it's the same exact set of requisites, but they're different files. So there is a runtime that people need to have on their and, and computers to run the application. Plus, there is a DLL that you need to distribute along with your, with your XE. Um, now, there is another caveat. The demo has a ton of code. And the reason it has a ton of code is that we had to refresh the WinRT header files for all of the classes used by WinUI 3 because we have them. We ship them with the with uh, Rust Studio. But of course, the version we had in, 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 in the last Rust Studio release from August doesn't include the change that Microsoft did in, in November. So this is basically a full set of WinRT header files that are part of the demo, but logically should belong to, to the runtime. Uh, next slide. So this, this is how it's going to, 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 to look. And um, I'm going to run a demo. Actually, I have a recorded, recorded code and stats, but I'll, I'll, I'll explain you what's happening in that video uh, shortly. Uh, again, the demo has two things, a runtime components and, um, and XAML based elements and hooks up the, the event handlers. So yeah, we can, we can get it going. It's, it's five minutes, so it should be fine. Um, so the starting point is, is an application you need to write. This is a console app technically because there are some logs and some error messages or strange conditions that as a developer, you might want to see as, as they happen. Um, so the important thing there is to um, just build an application. This is just a regular application. It uses a bunch of system classes that are part of the uh, Win API. And as you can see here, it, along with the demo, we are shipping all of the units. Uh, some of them are new, some of them are updated compared to what's in, in RAD 11. But basically, just keep them in the folder of the demo, and everything compiles and runs uh, very, very smoothly. Um, so the demo is big, but because there are all of these generated uh, header files for the updated um, UI. Now, if we look at the code, the code basically has has a um, has a relatively simple main, and um, in it. You, we, what, what we do, we need to check for a few conditions. Um, in particular, we need to check if we are running the application as elevated because that just doesn't work. It, you have to run as a regular user. That, that's a requirement for the Windows App SDK today. Um, but notice that you can run either at a package application with MSIX or AppX, 
but you can run it as a regular, what Microsoft calls non-package application. So just a regular XE built with Delphi, nothing, nothing special, just your XE, it will run as is. Um, now, there are some other checks there in that code in terms of that, that bootstrap initializes that DLL that, that's hooked in. And again, you'll get error messages, uh, in this case, console only, if something is wrong with your configuration, you have the wrong DLL or missing DLL or, or anything like that. Now, the core of the code is that main function. Um, that should get to. Uh, and that main is the, the well, the, the starting point uh, in terms of the, of the core application while most of the actual code is, is that up, up unit unit we'll get to in a second. So main basically calls T application start where T application is not VCL T application, it's another T application provided by uh, WinUI application model. And what is passed as parameter is a anonymous method. So it's, which is kind of a strange way of coding, but hey, that's required by, by the system. So we're mimicking it. And basically we are mimicking what C sharp or, or C plus plus demos do. The main point here is we're creating this T derived app. This is our code. This is the code that's written. Everything else is more boilerplate that eventually will get rid of when we'll fully support and integrate this type of technology. But for now, you need the boilerplate and um, you need that factory class. You need to, to create a few of the items. But the real code is uh, completely under this T derived app uh, uh, class that's in the um, secondary unit. Um, now it implements a couple of a couple of specific um, interfaces, um, and um, it it has a starting point this on launched where we building the UI, and then it has event handlers. These are the two main things that, that are there. So the creation of the UI is done in multiple different ways. One of them is um, just creating controls. Uh, you can create controls. You can create a stack panel and uh, you can create a button. This is the code that I just highlighted. So there is a T stack panel create and then a T button create and the button is hosted by the stack panel. Now there is a bit, a little extra boilerplate. The reason event handler installed at some point in that code um, and, and hooked to the control. The other option is use XAML. So the same code, a stack panel with a button, you can define XAML uh, with text. And then what you can do is basically, well, loading the XAML content into a reader and that generates your user interface element. So the UI element is a generation of a bunch of things through, through XAML. Um, now there is another piece of XAML, again, um, clone from one of the Microsoft demos that is a bit more complex is a grid hosting a text block with multiple lines of text. Uh, and again, the same process, uh, XAML content is loaded and, and generated. Now, when you're using XAML, then you need to find the right control to hook the event handlers. If you're creating the event, the button, you say button on click do this. But if you are creating the UI via XAML, you don't have a uh, uh, variable for your control. So you have to hook them up, basically searching for them, and then you can hook the, the controls. And the event handlers are not are fairly straightforward. This on click is used by both buttons, even though they're created differently. Uh, the button is the sender. It's kind of, we've seen, it's not that different from the Delphi side of things. Um, so a sender has I button. Um, and then what we do, we change the button content string um, to click. So it, it's relatively simple code. For the text block, we have uh, the the mouse events, I mean, pointer, enter, or exit, and the, the code changes the color depending on the state, on the position of the mouse uh, relative to the surface um, of the control. So slightly different ways of, of building things. Yes, the code is not trivial. It is complicated but it's uh, on par with what you'd write in C++ for, for, a, similar, uh, for a similar application. Um, and then I think, um, yeah, uh, let's see the, the application actually running. This is it. Again, there is the console behind it. You can disable it. You can remove the console and the write line statements. 
but this application, you can click on the buttons and they turn click. You can move over the mouse over the text and, and it changes color. So two simple event handlers, but um, it's really nice to be able to build an application like this with a completely new UI logic and, and set of UI controls using Delphi. The trouble is you can really mix that with a VCL application. That's a limitation of the current uh, win, um, implementation of um, WinUI 3. Microsoft has promised uh, support for what they call XAML Islands, which is the ability to mix, have a portion of your UI based on um, XAML, while the rest is a regular Win32 application. The other thing, remember, you need to ship that Bootstrap DLL. That, that's something that needs to come along with your application, plus have the uh, engine, the, the, the WinApp SDK, run the WinApp runtime installed on the on the target machine. Um, again, the blog post will have all of the links with their direct downloads. It's really simple to set up things and to uh, get things going. And that's the demo. And again, in terms of follow-up, the, the main point is we've been exploring and 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 delving deeper, I mean deep into it. Again, we have a demo available shortly after the release. Um, we are looking forward the ability to do a mix and match and integrate with our UI libraries. Uh, for now, that is not a, a real possibility. Um, Microsoft is still fully developing it. Uh, the, the next release plan is for November 22. So by November 22, we'll understand what the exact scope of the technology and the use cases, and, and we'll come up with a plan for uh, supporting it in our libraries, if that's if that's a possibility at the time. But for now, if you decide and want for some sp specific application to build a fully WinRT or, or WinUI 3 UI, you can do it. Um, again, might not be exactly trivial, but you can use XAML, you can use external designers, integrate that, that into your into a Delphi application, and uh, and run from there. So uh, I think that's quite cool. That is cool. Very cool. Thank you, Marco. Uh, the the ebooks are available in the handout section now. By the way, we got those got those added. Sorry for the delay on that. I love that. Marco, worst case that scenario. Cool. It was actually the first time I'd seen that that demo. Although I've you know known you've obviously told me it's been been underway for for some time. Um, that was really cool to see. Yeah, it's quite intriguing. Uh, I've been very happy. I'm sorry, Jim, you were going to say something. Please, please go ahead. No, I, I was going to say some same sort of thing is that I love that that it's like um, this is the early, early look at it. And it's like, well, it's about as much work as if you're writing it in Visual Studio, uh, Visual C++, but eventually it will be more Delphi uh, like and <laughs> easier to do. That's one of the things that. <laughs> That's one of the things I love about Delphi, though, is that you you have this high level, super productive stuff we can do with it. But then it's like, eh, worst case scenario, you know, you you can reach down and access all the APIs and do everything uh, manually, as if you're using a not you know something besides Delphi, a non rad tool, and, and still do everything. It doesn't it doesn't lock you out from stuff. So anyway, for some reason I can't skip go to the next slide. It lets me go back but not forward um all right there we go so this was something that i've done a couple webinars on python recently and a few people asked you know what, what's with all the python stuff that we keep talking about and so i thought it would be a good idea just to kind of to chat real quick about this because i think it's it's a really big deal really important so one thing is i used to be a big uh language competitor person right if if it, what if someone would told me what they were using something besides delphi i'd tell them why they were wrong um but I've come to realize that as a senior developer, you know, some of the developer that does quite a bit of work, usually we have multiple tools in our tool belt. So it's about right finding the right tool for the task and not about uh, saying one's always right. So generally speaking, you know, Delphi is great for most things, but occasionally there are times you want to have something different. And so this Python for Delphi bridge that we're working on gives you the ability to combine Python and Delphi. And actually we're looking at a few other bridges as well. 
I know some people that use, uh, frequently we use JavaScript as well, right? If you're doing something web-based, you probably have a little JavaScript in there. So, or, you know, C++ Builder, if you got Rad Studio, you can combine C++ Builder and Delphi, which is really actually extends the reach of your Delphi there because uh, you have access to all this great stuff out in the C++ world. So the C++, or the, I'm sorry, the Python offerings we have, we have PyScripter, which is, we, it's a IDE we've sponsored that's built in Delphi. We have the Python for Delphi bridge, which is the technology that PyScripter is built on that we sponsored as well. And there's two GitHub repositories on this I wanted to point out. This is the official one is the PyScripter Python for Delphi, but we have a fork that we make changes to, and those changes are being accepted into the PyScripter one, but they're not always up to date. So um, frequently, uh, we get some feedback on that from the maintainer and sometimes we don't always, sometimes we make more changes before it goes in or he accepts the changes in a batch or whatever. So just so you know, if you're looking for some of the stuff that we've made changes, they're in this uh, branch here. And then we have these two libraries here, Delphi VCL for Python and Delphi FMX for Python. What these are is they are the VCL and FireMonkey as Python modules, giving Python developers the ability to make great GUIs. So we, we took a look at this Python for Delphi bridge and saw that it goes both directions. You can make Delphi libraries available to Python and Python libraries available for Delphi, which is fantastic as a Delphi developer because now you can go out and get all these Python libraries, especially around machine learning and uh, big data and such, and just use them from Delphi as native libraries. And we're working on some examples around that. But we also saw that there is, I mean, there are some GUI libraries out there for Python, but they're they're okay. <laughs> they're not great. And so we're like, you know what? Delphi has amazing GUI libraries and they're really mature and fantastic. And they're cross-platform with the case of FireMonkey. So we've taken these and we're making them available to Python. Now, um, VCL is Windows only, but then FireMonkey actually lets you build uh, Python applications for Windows, Mac, Linux, and even Android. And so we have some examples. If you go look, we have a couple recent blog posts. I have a couple recent blog posts on this that show um, building uh, Android application with Python, which is pretty freaking amazing in my opinion. I, I think there's a lot of great stuff uh, we're gonna see here in the near future. So a lot of great stuff we're working on. So anyway, uh, um, So the question might be why, why, why are we distracting ourselves? So one thing about this is it's not, we're not pulling a lot of time from our architects and main R&D over onto this. It's kind of a side project, it's open source. Uh, it's all, most all being done externally. It's something I've uh, been focusing on and then have some external developers working on. Uh, occasionally we get some feedback from the rest of the community, rest of internally, but really it's it's separate. So it's not something we're distracting uh, efforts in Delphi from, it's something we're able to focus on separately. So I don't know if uh, Marco or David or Kyle, if you wanted to add anything to this, I, I think it's an, I think it's really important and exciting, but I know some people are confused as to why uh, Embarcadero, the makers of Delphi is now talking about Python so much. Yeah, this is Kyle. I'll just say a, a few words here. And, and, you know, one, just a thanks to all the attendees here. We're obviously encouraged by the the community around Delphi, um, and we want that community to grow. Um, and one of the ways that we see uh, an opportunity and uh, see a way that we can showcase the power of Delphi is by making these connections or bridges, as Jim mentioned, uh, to other languages and other other workflows. Um, and like you said, I mean, there are specific tools for specific tasks, specific languages that do things better. Um, and we are. Um, we realize that from you know from a high level at Embarcadero that we we aren't a one size fits all. We're not going to provide everything for for everyone. But if we can connect uh, to other languages and connect to other tools, it makes a, a greater ecosystem. And that's all, that's all we're about. Um, you know, Delphi doesn't survive in a vacuum. Uh, it has to be useful and relevant to uh, to new trends and new things in development. And an easy way for us to attach to that is to uh, to just do that to attach to what's going on outside of Delphi. Um, so we think this is there's some value here. Um, you know, a lot of our focus has been on well, you know, showing, uh, showcasing uh, how we can get, um, you know, give you as de Delphi developers uh, opportunities to use Python as a part of a piece of your workflow. 
Um, but as we we mature in this kind of bridge, we'll look at bringing more of the power of Delphi into Python and what that looks like. Um, and so fitting both of the, filling both of those needs um, and bridging that gap there, I think we're going to see this community grow even even further. So we, we're wanting to do this as, a, as an opportunity to keep this going for another 27 years. Yeah, if I can comment there as well, I was I was been thinking about this with uh, you know, what what the Delphi way is, and um, you know Marco showed earlier WinUE three and all the code that's required there, and you know we know the Delphi way makes it a lot simpler to make make UEs. Um, you know, in the same way the Delphi wraps so the old WinUE, and um, there's there's something else that is about Delphi and Bacadero that perhaps isn't quite so obvious, but you know we have a long history of language interop. Um, which I'm aware of because I work on the C++ side, which obviously works with Delphi a lot. Um, you know, but C++ benefits hugely from the Delphi libraries that, that is available to, to C++ devs. And, um, you know, I think working to make Python accessible to Delphi devs and Delphi accessible to Python devs just fits right in the DNA of uh, how Embarcadero does things. And if I could share a bit of history, actually, which I just thought of a few minutes ago, Many, many years ago, and to cast your eye back to 1998 or 1999 or something like that, um, uh, Teenage Dave used to make uh, maps for, for Quake. Um, and the map editor I used was Quark, which was written in Delphi. And uh, Quark uh, was actually half built in Python. Um, it had Python bindings uh, and this, this Delphi app uh, yeah, which was really advanced actually making making 3D game maps uh, use use Python heavily, um, and I just remember that a couple of minutes ago. But I, I think it's interesting because of you know such a long history of uh, Dolphin and Python uh, interacting. Yeah, for me, uh, for me, sorry, for me, the real benefit as well for including Python or making Python and Delphi work a little bit more closely is uh, the number of libraries out there for things like machine learning object recognition, automated uh, object recognition uh, is massive, absolutely huge. And many, many of them are done in Python. I don't know why, because it's, I suppose it's easy to do or something like that. Um, but uh, it means that we can actually bring some of those capabilities into Delphi apps very easily, um, which otherwise would be quite difficult unless you're relying on REST interfaces. But some of these um, Python libraries are very um, well Matured, I think, is the word I'm looking for. They've been used a lot. They're very well um, um, thought out, and and all of the bugs have been worked out of them because of the mass amount of users using them. And we can bring them into our Delphi apps, and all of a sudden, you know, you can have a mobile app that's written in FMX talking to uh, Python, and can do some quite incredible things with uh, uh, machine learning and and uh, AI and uh, object recognition on cameras and all those kind of things that we can do, but it's actually a lot harder in, in Delphi because we just don't have the libraries available uh, currently. Yeah, and one of the things, honestly, is um, Python, uh, there's a huge community of Python developers out there. And so we figure it's a great way to introduce them to the fantastic productivity of Delphi, right? So we, we give them a free tool that let them uh, build GUIs and they're gonna be like, oh, this is pretty useful. And maybe they'll come and uh, pick up a little Delphi too, so. Anyway, so we're pretty excited about it. Hopefully you're excited about it too. Uh, there's a few questions come up when we hear about Python. If you go to our blogs, you'll find a couple of recent webinars I did and I have blog posts about that. You can find a lot more details about it. So go check that out. And now we're gonna, uh, I'm gonna turn it over to Ian real quick to talk about Skia for Delphi, which I am really excited about this. They just had a version three and I've had so many people message me saying, have you seen version three? It's so cool. So <laughs> definitely something we need to talk about today. Yeah, well, I hope my demo would do justice. And um, Jim, I need to be able to share my screen. So I think you need to allow me to do that, is it? Here we go. Uh, let's see which screen do I want. Um, three. I have multiple monitors. You know how it is. It's like uh, which one is the one I want to share? That looks like the one. Hopefully you can see see my uh, my Delphi. Anybody not see it? 
Yeah, that sounds good. Okay, we haven't got anybody saying, oh, I can't see it. That's good. Okay, so um, Skier for Delphi. What should we talk about Skier for Delphi? Well, um, Skier for Delphi is an open source project. Um, it's actually written by two uh, brothers primarily. Um, the two brothers are, and I've tried practicing saying the names because they've got uh, quite extraordinary names for an English person to try and pronounce. It's uh, Paolo uh, Barbosa and Vinicius Barbosa. A um, couple of brothers. They are probably some of the smartest programmers I've ever come across. Um, really, really do know their stuff. And um, we have talked about this before at the um, Delphi uh, Con in 2021. And um, you should be able to see uh, the project here. This is where it is. It's uh, at the Skier for Delphi um, uh, GitHub repository, but we're going to give the links to you later. And really, um, because we haven't got a massive amount of time, I'm going to give you a quick overview of what version three can do. And um, later on this week, we're going to do a more extended video because we're very excited about this project. We think it's a really incredible project and um, a nice blog post to accompany it as well. So um, let's pull up uh, the demo. And um, if I just run it, where did I get it running? Come on, computer. Uh, it's all swapped. I see, to I see your wallpaper now. Yeah, hang on just one second. Here it is. Oh, it's hidden behind. Oh, you know what? I've got all my little um, icons uh, hidden behind the screen. Right. So this is their little um, demo app. Um, Skier for Delphi is used, uh, Skier is, itself is used in a number of different projects, including Flutter, um, Firefox, um, uh, lots of very big projects use it as a graphics engine behind the scenes. And it does some nice little things like um, allow you to um, show these types of animations. This is called a Lottie an am animation, am am animation. And, um, these animations are kind of weird because they're actually JSON files, and that's how the animation is described. Um, in the full uh, demo that I'll do, I'll tell you where to find those. There's a whole repository of ready-made animations. So you, can, you can make your own as well. Um, it can uh, do sorts of things like this, where they are um, cool little uh, animations. But that's only really a small uh, part of what you can do with this library. If I uh, grab this and pull this over like this, I want to make this a bit bigger. Um, but you can see there's multiple animations running at the same time. Um, it can uh, run animated GIFs, which actually is a big bonus. Now, what you can't see here, um, probably because of the streaming quality, first of all, the amazing uh, quality of this animated GIF, but also the smoothness of it. Uh, a lot of components that you see for Delphi um, that can do animated GIFs are actually a little bit jumpy. Um, because they're relying on timers and things like this. But this is using the skill library um, in the background. Another thing you can do is WebP, which is a new format um, for uh, graphics and uh, basically replaces things like um, JPEGs and stuff like that. But this is only a very small part of um, what this library does. So if I show you uh, one of the other things it can do, very, very smooth distortions of images and things like this. So if you can imagine that you're writing something to, I don't know, manipulate graphics of some type, even the, um, maybe even an X-ray or something like that, but I don't know, something where you need to um, uh, uh, transform the images. Look at how smooth that is. I'm moving that mouse around, no jagged edges down the side or anything like that. Absolutely incredible. If we um, choose this uh, demo, this is probably one of the cooler demos as well. Again, might not show up on, on a video stream, but that is incredibly smooth animation. That's taken an image and it's allowing you to rotate it in three dimensions um, and in the Z order and the uh, yeah, X and Y axes and things like that. Very, very smooth. And this is all simply done with the control. There's not lots of uh, complicated um, uh, graphics going on in the background and manipulation not lots and lots of code, uh, but uh, perhaps the most exciting demos is this. Now, I don't know how well this shows up on the screen. Hopefully, you can see that reasonably well, but that is um, some text that's coming across as a bunch of particles. Particles are one of the new things that's been introduced in version three 
of this library absolutely incredible um they just imagine the kind of you know screens you can put in even if you just had a simple uh, uh you know splash screen or something like that it's the wow factor when your app first starts up it starts with a, an animated splash screen that's got some some of these things in it um really uh, absolutely amazing you can see it's interacting with my mouse and uh, so on and so forth now those are the kind of more uh, pretty uh, little things that it can do um it, it, it can do some other cool things like this. This is a, a, a shader animation. So what this is doing here is it's animation, animating the shading of an image so that it gives it a, a, uh, um, an animated effect. This is absolutely crystal clear on my monitor. There is no jagged edges. It's all anti-aliased. It's all done in real time and it is not in any way um, uh, stuttering on performance. I can shake it around and do weird things with it. This is the Windows 11 machine I'm running on, but it will run on, on almost any um, version of Windows, I think from uh, 10 upwards, actually, to be fair, but, um, uh, you know, anything anything recent. But look at the quality of this. This is the kind of thing that you can do uh, with this uh, app, uh, with these uh, set components. And you can see here that the shading is actually following my mouse. And again, it's rendering in, in real time. You can't see it very well, I'm sure, on the screen, but this is an incredibly um, smooth um, radial uh, uh, grad fill there. And if you think about this as a button, if you remember in Windows uh, 10 and Windows 11, buttons have this kind of effect over. So it's actually, you could you know, make this appear over the top of a button. You can use that kind of thing to add some very cool effects. Look at the quality of this. Again, just a shader animation. Absolutely mind-blowingly good. I cannot say enough good things about this library. Jim and I are both very big fans of this library and also big fans of the guys um, who work behind it. Um, the two brothers, Paolo and, and Vinicius, um, very, very smart guys, and their code is, is quite incredible. Um, it can do some other weird things as well. You can support SVGs, and not only that, but if I pull my browser over, um, it can actually create a PDF on the fly as well. So uh, there is a, um, a, a PNG um, object that's been rendered in a PDF on the fly. Um, again, extremely um, powerful, very fast, very slick, great piece of code. And I'm just gonna show you one last little project, um, which is actually on my own GitHub as well, which I showed in the um, Delphi Kong, uh, um, I say no to that now. Um, the DelphiCon uh, uh, conference, and if you didn't attend, you missed out. But if I pull this over, it's going to be over here. Just minimise this so that you can see it a bit better. But uh, there is your Star Trek LCAS computer, and I know David will be pleased about this because David, Jim, and I are all big Star Trek fans. In fact, I was gonna, I was going to wear my Star Trek top, but I thought uh, you know I'll be a little bit more professional and have my D-Day top on Delphi Day as it is. But um, if I just silence the uh, the uh, sounds in the background there, what this is doing is um, something that is a little bit um, cleverer than it looks. I know it's a kind of cool, geeky little toy. But if you see in the top here, there are some um, some text that is actually Klingon text. Uh, because, you know, if I'm a real geek, I'm going to have Klingon on there, aren't I? Uh, and my wedding vows weren't in Klingon. Don't worry, I'm not that bad. But uh, there's also some custom Star Trek fonts. And, uh, you know, I've laid it out in columns and there's your traditional um, Star Trek uh, next generation style font on, on all the rest of it. These are all Lottie animations. All these fonts are loaded in at runtime and it starts almost instantly and renders these at runtime. Now, you can download this project. We will put some links up to this project. But you can download this project. I've updated it for version three because version three broke the animations. In the VCL, the animations cannot be transparent, but in FMX, because it also works for FMX, it can be transparent. And while we're on the subject of VCL and FMX, the other big um, thing about this library is that um, you can um, have uh, a little setting set in your um, uh, Skier for Delphi uh, option. I can't remember off the top of my head where this is because they only released this two days ago. But you can actually tell it to say use skier 
or Delphi is the background rendering image uh, image library for um, FireMonkey, and your FireMonkey canvases will be drawn with the skier um, functions behind the scenes. What does that give you? Well, what it gives you is true anti-aliasing of amazing quality. There are a few little quirks that they're working out at the moment because I follow the project and they've got a couple of little bugs, but these guys are very, very good at uh, jumping on top of those bugs and um, fixing them. But uh, you can have all of your FireMonkey stuff rendered using this library automatically in the background. You just check a little checkbox and all of a sudden it's using that uh, skier uh, for Delphi library. Jim and I both um, believe this is the future of doing some graphics in Delphi. Um, you know, one of the things that's always been very powerful about Delphi is its ability to produce really good quality user interfaces, things like theming, things like uh, um, cross-platform um, uh, rendering in native uh, format, but also being able to use uh, lots of visual controls and actually low code, you know, drop the components on, set a few properties and off you go, there's your program. You don't need to write all the complicated code to make these things happen. It's all done for you, drop them on. I, I didn't write much code at all for this uh, particular project. And, uh, and and it does some cool stuff. I mean, there's a few things to do with the re rendering of the graphics, but download that and you'll see. So that's here for Delphi. And um, I think Jim's gonna talk a little bit about their project. And by the way, the two brothers are actually on the conference today. They uh, don't wanna talk because they're too shy, but I uh, just wanna you know, give them a good thumbs up from all of us and say, well done. You know, Jim and I both have said that we will help support this project because we think the work you've done is absolutely incredible. Over to Jim. Jim. Actually, so the the one of the big things in three is that they really improved the mobile performance big time. Um, that was in the in the first version. Mobile performance wasn't great, but uh, it's a little harder to demo. And I know that uh, the live uh, or the high speed graphics don't render real well over go to webinar but it does yeah. and, and in smooth. fact uh, uh jim uh, one of the things they do talk about is they've got some comparison tables but for the very relative speeds and uh we're just doing a very quick you know this is what it is uh introductory thing here because uh, we've got plenty of people on the conference today but i will do a long uh, more extended kind of uh, overview of this because there are some comparison tables that they've run that show you quite how fast this is because i haven't labored on that but this library is blindingly fast and and it really is a massive leap forward in terms of graphical uh user interfaces graphic rendering managing uh, animations new ways of doing animation and also things like being able to support svgs in a very um, fast and um, comfortable sort of way and uh, webp uh, which is a uh, becoming a more um relevant type of graphic uh, format as well, which this library also handles. You drop a, a component on, and all of a sudden you can uh, you can run some um, some uh, WebP animations or graphics. It's, it's, I cannot say enough good things about this project, and I know you're a big fan as well, Jim. So I am. Well, and one of the things is that the a lot of the um, design process nowadays, people or your designers, if you hire a designer, will be designing in. Um, I can't remember the platforms are called, but they create SVG graphics. And so you can just ex import those SVG graphics that they're creating right in your Delphi application. So you can hire a designer to design your GUI and just make that part of your Delphi application. So. Yeah, and, then, and there's a lot of those Lottie animations already made. I mean, I didn't do any of these animations. So I just went, let's find some that looks Star Trek-like so that I could uh, do a Star Trek uh, interface. And hey, it worked. You know, everyone was like, hey, cool demo. I'm like, I didn't really do anything. You know, I also <laughs> tell people I'm lazy. I, I, nobody believes me, but I really am lazy. <laughs> I, I, uh, I try not to do too many clever things, but, you know, rendering the fonts, it can do right to left rendering and anti yeah. and, you know, you can apply shader effects to your fonts. So you can have cool kind of shaded fonts and you could even do the Star Trek, uh, uh, Star Wars, should I say, you know, the, uh, the scrolling credits type thing. That would be possible. You could have it disappearing into a cloud animation if you wanted to. So. Very, very, very cool. Yeah. All right. So I need to get on to the Spirit of Delphi Award. This is the thing where we go out and recognize community contributors for all that they've done to uh, improve the community of Delphi development. It was introduced back in 1998 as part of the annual developer conference. Uh, winners are selected internally. Uh, it's, it, it's where Embarcadero, or at the time Borland, would recognize community contributors. Who, who's making a big difference out there? 
Uh, you're basically, I, I like to say the winners fundamentally improve and expand what it means to be a Delphi developer. And this is where we, you know, say, hey, you know what? sure we're making the ide and the compiler and the base libraries but the reality is is that it's the members of the community that are really uh can take it much much further so here's the list of previous winners you'll notice there was a gap there um until we decided hey we can we, we just start doing these again and i didn't do one last year so actually i'm going to catch up here for two years but the previous winners here uh marco Cantu is one of the winners um Project Jedi, Mark Miller. Oh, there's Marco's cat plaque. Wow. All right, I need to make some plaques up. <laughs> Fantastic. So anyway, this is this is a very a very big deal, and it's an opportunity for us to recognize people that really. And if you, you look through this list, chances are uh, you recognize these names and realize that they are have really made a big difference. I know when I first started Delphi. The Delphi Super Page was a phenomenal resource. You got there, and there were components for everything. I think I can't remember if it's still around or not, but it's not. Um, not a, I don't use it as often as I used to. Uh, Nick Hodges, the Chuck Norris of Delphi, uh, Fast MM, big great thing. Andreas Hauslauden, Kerry Jensen, David I. So, the new Spirit of Delphi Award winner for oh, this is supposed to be animated. Oh well. Uh, 2020 Spirit of Delphi Award winner is Dave Nottage. He runs the incredibly popular online uh, Delphi Worlds, which is, you guys got as a Slack group on there. He hangs out on Quality Portal. I can't believe how often someone will say, oh, I've submitted an issue on Quality Portal. And by the time I get out there to look at it, Dave's already commented and told people to work around for it. And I'm like, oh, wow. <laughs> I don't know how he does so much, honestly. Uh, he mains, maintains a number of really useful open source projects. Uh, his Castry project is incredibly powerful uh, if you're not familiar with castry go out and take a look at it because it does everything <laughs> uh, it's one of those projects that it, it just does so much there's a lot of those out there there's a lot of these libraries out there for delphi that just do a lot so go out there and take a look at that and you'll find it there's also i guess device lens is the other one that is like really useful if you're doing android development it lets you view your log files and stuff like that right from the ide so Shout out to Dave Nottage for all his work. Uh, shoot him a uh, message. You can find him on Twitter as Delphi Worlds or on GitHub or go out on the Slack, Slack right now and say, yay, Dave. Uh, he runs Delphi Worlds Slack. You can find him on DelphiWorlds.com. Very, very deserving of the, the uh, spirit of Delphi. But we do have for 2021 now, um, it's like, one of the problems I had is trying to figure out when to do the the Spirit of Delphi Awards, and I think that doing it on Delphi's birthday for the late last year is a great time to do it. So catching up and doing the 2021 Spirit of Delphi Award winner is the two brothers from Brazil making skier for Delphi. <laughs> this is, uh, they've been working so, so hard on this, and I'm always trying to find ways to help uh, make it help people be more aware of what they're doing because this i think really is going to have a huge impact on what it means to be a delphi developer and so thank you thank you paulo and venesis for your work on this this is a big deal really big deal and uh, hopefully uh more people will be aware of this go out there and uh download it tell them thanks and uh support their project i've been supporting their project and will continue to support their project on github sponsoring it and such so they are, they are both online as well, listening to this. So I think they've just been notified. <laughs> yay, yay, awesome. Well done, well done, guys. I mean, this is amazing work. And I think all of us, all four of us were, were you know, blown away by what they can do. They're really great. And this really is what Delphi is all about, is producing components that make lives, everybody's life a lot easier as a developer. And, and, you know, these guys really did a good job, really good. And, and uh, we're going to go over the hour here, <laughs> unfortunately, uh, but we are here still to, to have conversations and such as well. But th this is one of the things, because Delphi is written in Delphi and it has this really extensible platform, the fact that, you know, in Barcadero, we can make the compiler and the base libraries and then people can take and make so much more and expand it so much with, uh, like, Skia for Delphi or Dave Nottage's libraries and add-in tools and such is a huge, huge, huge thing. And so thank you to everybody in the community. I, it's always hard picking Spirit of Delphi award winners because there's so many people out there that do so much. But uh, 
definitely, definitely very, uh, very deserving of this. Uh, do want to remind everybody before we go into the full conversation here, there is a great uh, deal going on right now for um, Delphi. If you want to upgrade to get the 27th anniversary super offer, 27% off Enterprise and Architect, which is a really good deal. Uh, our, best, our best deal yet, imagine, because it's the 27th birthday. Um, also 17% off professional. So you can go out to Embarcadero.com slash rad offer to take advantage of that. But now let's kind of go over into, oh, check out blogs, uh, look for the tag Delphi 27th, and we'll have a lot more blog posts coming up. Uh, a lot of MVPs have done things as well. I'll do a roundup of that as well. Yeah, uh, there's also a great, a great infographic that was just released, I think minutes ago while we were doing this. That's really fabulous. It's a, it's a huge poster of, of the Delphi history compared to what's been happening in the industry alongside. Um, yep. It's really a, a fantastic resource. It's very fun. Uh, you can print it out, but you, you need a lot of paper. I will be printing it out. I <laughs> uh, can use like uh, an entire wall. Yeah. So there's some questions about the WinUI stuff, Marco. Um, is that something we expect to be seeing into the project in the near future, or what, what can people expect around that? Uh, it, it's really hard to tell because it depends on, on on what the core technology delivers and and when and and what if any limitation would be part of the of the uh, of the architecture. So it basically depends on Microsoft. If Microsoft makes it easy and possible and straightforward to do a deep integration, we want to have ability to use XAML islands. Uh, based on WinUI 3 as part of a VCL or FireMonkey application. So you paint a par portion of your surface or some of your forms, uh, like the entire form, but not all of the forms with, uh, with some control. That would allow us to do things like maps <laughs> on a native on Windows. And well, you can already do a browser through an, a slightly different mechanism with these, the Edge browser, which is still part of the Windows App SDK. But it's really up to Microsoft, because if you look at today's version, um, it has limitations. Again, you can only do, I mean, it's either WinUI or VCL or a regular application, uh, which which is, well, not ideal. And the other thing, I think it's still limited to one main form only. So you cannot have like a secondary main form. Um, because this this boils back to the old Winner T and application uses the entire screen model in Windows 8, which which wasn't wasn't that a great idea anyway. But but that's it. So it has some some structural limitation. And the other thing is determining how how it's going to scale up. What if you want to have more than one XAML islands in an application? Uh, one or if you want to have two of them in two different forms. We don't know what is going to be possible and to what extent and with which type of performance. So based on that, we'll, we'll, we'll work uh, an integration plan. Uh, worst case scenario, you'll have to write some manual code like this. But again, it, it's code. Um, it, it, first time you read it, it, it looks weird, but it's easy to understand what you can touch, how you can change things, how you can add new controls and, and hook event handlers. Uh, at the end of the day, once you have the, the basic code, you can really play with it and um, and build real world application. You can ship an application based on it if you want. And again, not not having to pick a different language or, or, or tool chain, but just using Delphi and uh, any backend data, any any data access, any RTL, and then switch to, to WinUI 3. So for now, it's an experiment. Um, we'll keep monitoring what Microsoft does. And we'll see. And that's they are not the only thing on Windows App SDK. I mean, Windows App SDK is becoming the next big ecosystem for Windows application alongside the traditional Windows SDK. They don't overlap or only in part. Um, so we are monitoring other libraries and other technologies, which are quite nice. Uh, some of them are not that relevant for us. Like there is a translation support based on DLL with resources. Come on, we've had that in Delphi 2, so 26 years ago. So I don't think we're going to adopt it because, hey, we have it and it's been working. Um, the other things like application lifetime are interesting. 
um, ways to manage the status, standby mode of application, and other things that are not trivial to implement with, with the traditional um, Windows SDK or, or with Delphi. And, um, and other things are coming. There are actually a ton of features coming. And um, again, we're closely monitoring it. It's very nice that doing package application like MSAX and NAPAX with the limitation that come along is not a requirement anymore for some of this integration. The development model and deployment is still a bit weird because you have this, this loading library, this external DLS, these, these runtime, which are not part of the operating system, so you have to deploy them. But I think Maxo is going to, to improve that and, and make it kind of a core element of the operating system anyway. And notice that it's not only for Windows 11. Oh, that code I was showing was running on Windows 10. They claim it might even, it should even run on Windows 7, although I haven't tried. Uh, but clearly Windows 10 since probably create, I mean, one of the old versions, create or update or something is supported. Um, although there are hiccups like the, the, the high DPI support for Windows 10 is not the same of Windows 11. So uh, again, something that, that um, was noticeable, is noticeable in the demo. If you're running high DPI, it's not, it's not that, that smooth. Uh, but again, it, it's, it's something Microsoft is working on. They are releasing a new version every six months, providing updates. And um, because it's an integral part of the operating system, for us, it's important to support it. Uh, and integrate the features with our libraries as it makes sense and it's his feet. And again, web browser was the most critical thing to do upfront because because relying on Internet Explorer is, makes no sense these days. Um, David, there's a few questions here asking, but well, what does this yada 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 work on C++ Builder, whether it be the, the XAML Islands or the Skia or whatever? I, I, I believe all of it should work. The Python works. There's a David Milling or David I did a webinar on that. I don't know if you want to chime in on any of the C++ builder support. We do plan to do some C++ birthday celebration here shortly as well. So, sure. So yes, you probably saw me like leaning forward to my my keyboard and answering a, a few of these questions. Um, as, as far as I know, I mean, usually everything in Delphi works in C++ builder. Um, you know, as you said, the the Python bindings work in C++ builder. Um, Skia, I haven't personally tested. I think um, Skia 3 just came out two days ago, um, but I wouldn't expect it not to. Uh, you know, there'd be no reason why it, why it wouldn't. Um, and, and the same with everything else. That's you know one of the benefits of C++ builders. You can you can drop Delphi into it and, and use that. Um, so um, I mean, the best answer is would be very surprised if not. Um, give it a go and please let us know if it doesn't. Um, but as you mentioned, yes, um, not entirely to take away from Delphi, but uh, C++ Builder has a birthday as well in about uh, in about two weeks. So um, yeah, that's that's all kind of cool. Many many anniversaries coming up. In yeah. fact, uh, David, they do on the skier for Delphi site. They do actually say Rad Studio 11 Alexandra. Um, Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Platform, so they don't actually say specifically Delphi, but that could be just because it's skier for Delphi, but um, unfortunately, not really responded to the chat at the moment. Uh, otherwise, I'd get a definitive answer. But I, from what I know of it, it will work on C++ Builder as well. So. Uh, there's a question here. I'm not sure the answer of. I believe the answer is yes. Does purchasing the latest Delphi Pro license also give access to download and use previous versions? Is that still something we offer? I think right, it was yeah, the download of previous versions is still part of the product. So once you buy the latest version of Delphi, the single license actually goes across a few old versions, but then you can also download additional licenses for older ones. There is a time frame for that. I think six months or something to ask for specific licenses of older versions, older meaning pre XC8, I think. Um, and then the, 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 the download files and ISOs are available. That's starting with Delphi 7, I think, and C++ Builder 6, and excluding the Delphi.net slash Delphi 8 release, which has some IP. There are some IP issues around it, so we're not, we're not making it available anymore. But I doubt people would be interested, so it's fine.
Uh, I just put a link into the two Python webinar video blog post I did recently. If you want people asking about that, if you want to see more about that, or go out to the uh, Python for Delvi has a link to some more in there as well. A lot of people sharing their stories about how great the great stuff they've done with Delphi over the years. That's fantastic to see. Um, uh, uh, David, there's people asking about the Parnassus components for Delphi. If they're if we're still continuing to include those, or what the plan is for that? Oh yes, they should be out soon. Um, we've been integrating them into our build system. I mean, they came as a third party. Your library, and so we've, we've been working on our build system there. And um, I mean, wanted to, to promise a particular date until they're out because that's, that's not something we do. But um, you're hand waving here, I'd expect it around the, the one time frame, so pretty soon. Uh, if people are asking for specific examples about Skia for Delphi, take a look at their uh, um, GitHub repository, download the trial, the samples, and then Ian will have a follow up as well. Yeah, they, they, do, they do have a lot of examples and as I said we're going to do a video and a big blog post about it as well so. yeah what, what so if people commenting about Python and Delphi uh, th it's kind of a, the word synergy <laughs> it's one of those things that people throw around it's like it usually makes people the hair on people's neck stand up because it feels like it's a, a buzzword but realistically it's when you Delphi is cool Python is cool but you combine the two together that's really cool. <laughs> a few people asked about uh, protecting for decompilation. The so Python is a scripting language, so anything you write in Python is you're distributing the source code. But if you write a Delphi module that has functionality in it, and then include that in your Python application, that is compiled and is hard to decompile. So um, there's a lot of great things you can do there to combine the two. Uh, does Skia for Delphi support FireMonkey and not VCL, or does it support both? Sorry, what was the question? I was busy answering someone else's question. Does it support oh, VCL it, and FireMonkey both? It does. It does both uh, FireMonkey and uh, VCL. And with FireMonkey, it can actually target everything as well. So Android, iOS, Mac OS. Uh, I don't. I can't remember whether it does Linux as well, but uh, definitely does everything else. In the app I showed you, it's actually built for um, for everything. So it's great. There's some minor differences, but they're not significant, I don't think. There's a question here if there's any synergies between Delphi and other IDERA acquired software companies. Actually, I think there's some potential in UltraEdit. I'm pretty excited about UltraEdit, honestly. Um, I think everybody, every developer I work with, myself, included has a second editor that they're using and ultra edit is a great solution for that opens huge files very quickly i mean like 500 meg files you know straight away it's very weird um that's what i use it for to open sql files uh, you know actually ian big in that multi multi device i i used to work for a scientific company and we had gigantic data files and um yeah that was that was a go-to editor of choice or should it time and attendance files are always huge they've got lots of clock-ins and clock outs and people being sick or not <laughs> yeah and it, i've started using it a lot it's 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 quite impressive the performance is well it looks native it is native it is fast and also some of the operations that i used to do with other tools like XML formatting, JSON formatting, and all of this, this, this type, different formats with, um, with like, like a gazillion options. Are you on a format scale, indent? I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. It's really written by developers for developers. The, the amount of, of options you have is, is, is almost insane. But it comes out being extremely nice in managing and, and updating and working on, on, any any text document, but with supporting for like hundreds of different languages, although the support is not as on par of the Delphi language support you get in Delphi or, or C++ built in C++, but great support for a ton of different languages and um, yeah, um, uh, JSON, XML, and a bunch of other notations and formats. They're really, really nicely supported with lots of integrated tooling, uh, tidying, checking formats, very fine correctness, 
and and all of those sort of things are all built into. Uh, plus, it has yeah, not nice nice other utilities, a very fast search, um, FTP support, and and a bunch of other things that are that are part of the ecosystem. So it's only totally worth checking. As a hex editor as well, so you can go back in oh, time. Oh, hex editor, yeah, the hex <laughs> editor is very nice for sure. Yeah. We have X editor and we have XML editor in, in the Rust Studio ID, but they have, they don't come even close to what what Ultra Edit offers. <laughs> so uh, someone's asking about the discount. I put a link in for it there and also shared it. You can find the uh, discount at Rad Offer or our latest uh, special offers. Typically, will be Rad Offer, although sometimes there'll be some variation from. Uh, regionally because of resellers but uh if it's a it's a global offer you can find your route offer um also if you want to submit your really cool delphi app you can still submit showcases we don't have the contest right now but you can always add a new one i guess we should update the banner here and uh if we come out here i can show you the uh, innovation timeline which is very very cool there how got put this together He's our product marketing manager. I am really excited about this. He's worked really, really hard on it, as you can see, um, covering all the uh, stuff there and downloadable as a PDF that you could print. And I am planning to work on printing mine this afternoon. <laughs> I'm not sure if I have to go over to the, uh, I might go to the uh, print place that can do large format or I'll try tiling a bunch of uh, files. But anyway, be a good idea, Jim. It, is, it is gigantic. It's an amazing infographic. One of the things I like about this, just because of the size and the details, because uh, you know, Delphi used to come with you know large posters and, and infographics and that kind of thing, and um, you know, although this one is a, is a timeline, not a class layout thing, it um, it feels the same to me. I, I it feels very Delphi-ish, just in its um, your own way of way of being. Apparently, I have. I know the download works. It's just not working for me. So. <laughs> uh... Someone, so there's a question about C++ builder books. David, do you know if there's any C++ builder books in the works or recently? I know it, it's kind of weird because C++ builder books, it's like a C++ book cover would apply for a C++ builder and a Delphi book would apply for C++ builder, but I don't know if there's any C++ builder specific books. Um, I'm not sure actually, I'll, I'll have to find out. Um, I know there's been a huge renaissance of, of Delphi books and um... Yeah, you're right. I think a lot of the material in those could be um, expanded to C++. Learn C++.org as well. It's got a lot of examples and things like that. Learn C++ spelled out .org. Yeah, there's certainly a lot of you know, pure C++. You're know, not focusing on the C++ build aside uh, books and, and websites. And um, yeah, this one is, is one of ours. So it's, that's a good point here. Um, Gosh, there was another... Great C++ builder specific site, and I can't remember what it is right now. Um, unfortunately, I apologize. I I sometimes have the Delphi blinders on and and don't cover C++ as much as I'd like. There's a lot of videos online as well. There's um, learn uh, what's the name True Code Beauty or something like that. Uh, who, who seems to be part model, part uh, programmer, which is a unique. <laughs> Uh, combination, I think, in the programming world, but there you go. Um, but uh, she does a lot of uh, very good um, videos as well of uh, of um, not just C++ builders, C++ in general, but um, extremely uh, good tutorials and stuff like that. There yeah, was a... a lot of material online on YouTube and um, yeah, the yeah. website you just pointed out in has, I mean, that, that's C builder specific as well. So um, yeah, yeah. I, I think a good answer then to the question is online rather than in, in, in paper. Yeah. Here we go. This VCL examples, um, he has a lot of great C++ builder videos here too. Um, I'll put the link in here for that. Um, um, anything else you want to add, David? I know you've been answering questions here as we go. I'm just skimming through questions and trying to answer them here. Uh, well, we have so many thousand people online, but it's difficult to uh, keep up with the questions. And I, I think we've, we've managed to, between us, answer 10% of them or, or something like that. Um, 
but uh, so so if your question has you know come in and, and hasn't been answered, your apologies for that. But also it really speaks to the attendance and the interest that you have. Um, we always save the log and we read through it afterwards, so we will see everything that you you write in. And and the diversity of countries as well, because uh, there are people from virtually every country you can pick, including Algeria, um, you know the UK, the US, obviously. Um, but also, you know, virtually every European country, every non-European country. Uh, it's quite exciting, really. Yeah, yeah there are a couple of questions I wanted that I, I replied to online, but it's worth mentioning. So first thing for those who have been joining for the anniversary, the long-time users, and there was one specific person say he's now retired. There is a Delphi Community Edition that you can use for free if you don't have a business in development or with some limited quotas on, on what you can earn from it. But if you're retired and want, or, or, or if you're a student and want to use the product to un understand it, play with it, do your own development, do what you want with it, uh, no question asked unless it's not a real business. Um, the Delphi Community Edition is great, it's out there. It's not up to the latest version. So right now we have 10.4, which is which is a year old, but it's it's a perfectly working software, allows you to build for, for desktop and mobile and has a ton of features, so absolutely worth um, using it. And again, it's free if you're not a, a professional developer. Um, that's one important thing. The other thing that I saw uh, asked about was uh, about um, Linux, and we fully support Linux as a target for Delphi development, so you can build, um, a Linux server, a Linux application in general, using FMX Linux, which is currently a free uh, add-on to Delphi, you can build a FireMonkey user interface application on Linux and target Linux on it. And if you don't have a Linux machine at hand, you can run a Linux FireMonkey application on a Windows machine through the Windows Linux subsystem. So you can, you can Play with it and target Linux, even if even if you're on Windows. And I think Jim did did a webinar explaining it recently. So um, yeah, all platforms are covered. You can build a Delphi application for Windows, Win32, Win64, um, for Mac OS, uh, Intel, or the ARM uh, M1. I mean, specific uh, binary for for M1. Um, you can build for Linux, Intel, uh, and including the user interface. And that same user interface you can build natively for Windows, Linux, and um, Mac OS uh, uh, without any change. Now, possibly with some UI change, but with the same logic, with the same Farm Monkey, you can build on iOS and on Android, on uh, iOS 64-bit only because 30-bit doesn't exist anymore, on Android, both 32-bit and 64-bit. So you can basically target almost every every hardware and platform out there with a relevant user base uh, out of the of Delphi code and in many cases out of the same exact source code that, that builds across platform, server side, client side, um, mix it. Um, and so it, it offers really a lot. Uh, and again, I'm mentioning it because I, I see from this question that some people just bumped on it, but they're not regularly following what, what Delphi is doing these days. And plus, if you are really a business developer, then I mean, there's this uh, astonishing discount. So well, have a look. Uh, I don't know how we how we're going to continue because I mean, uh, coming a few years, that will that will become really a huge discount. <laughs> so I don't know. I mean, but yeah, for now, the the sales decided to go for it. So uh, yeah, not on the pro, which is the uh, lower cost version. But if you are interested in enterprise or architect, that they they do have a really deep discount because 27 percent is is quite nice yeah there there was there were conversations about can we do 27 percent? that's a lot <laughs> so i don't know if there'll be a 28 percent, but they did 27 this year they were a little hesitant there um so here's and, oh, the other thing this oh where is it down here this is the delphi oh gosh this is the delphi one box sitting right here the original uh, physical box has manuals and the CD in it. It's the, the box internally is a bit broken, so I don't touch it because it, it tends to fall apart. <laughs> and then there's a Delphi 5. Uh, this is a special edition because when I got the that award, uh, I also got that box signed by the entire R&D team. So that, that's how the award was. Friends in high places. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Or is it low-level places? <laughs> 
So, Marco, there's a question here about WinUI 3 that you showed. It says, as experts, can you advise why you might use WinUI 3 instead of good old VCL or uh, even the more modern FireMonkey? Why, as a Delphi developer, would you care or want to use WinUI 3? Uh, there are a couple of cases. One is if you have the specific need of one control. Uh, I mentioned maps. That, that, that's something interesting. That that is unique to the library. The other thing, if you are in a mixed environment and um, there might be like a company decision to standardize on on Microsoft native, most recent native UI, and there might be reason that I don't know your designers want to build XAML in it for for defining the UI, and they give you the XAML, and so I mean the option was okay, throw away Delphi and move to to a different language and tool. If that's the requirement. And, and they're fine you using any language, well, that, that's an option. Uh, for now, I we are considering this more an experimental thing, something you can experiment with, play with, try to understand. It's an interesting technology. It's a very nice set of UI controls, for sure, and um, with some nice scaling and positioning. Um, so it's certainly worth experimenting with, uh, which is what how we that's what we treat it like, an experiment and a demo. But it, it has value and it has merit. And um, again, it's, it's, a, it's a good technology with good styling. Uh, some of the features there, some of the specific controls are, are nice. And we're simulating some of them recently, like the control, the control list that we introduced in 10.4 to have multiple comps and so forth. There is a matching component in WinUI that we thought was very nice. So, hey. We did something similar. The same in the past. We did a few other components that were maybe from the older WinUI, the older WinUI version, not, not version three, which is brand new. Um, but in some cases, again, there might be reason for you to mix and match with with uh, software built with other technologies and we, uh, with other teams in your company. So having that possibility um, is nice. And again, it would be really nice to be able to embed one single super powerful WinUI controls within your existing BCL application. That's where we see a lot of value because there might be a third party control or a native control that doesn't exist in BCL. And if you are just able to drop it in, like you can drop uh, the TH browser into a BCL application today, you get a modern, nice looking, 100% um, compatible Chrome compatible browser within your application. And that's absolutely great. So similarly, there could be other very special components you might controls you might want to drop in uh, an app. So that's where we see most value. But again, worth experimenting, worth playing with it, and um, yeah, and we'll see how it how it continues and how it go, how it goes. Yeah, I mean, I I think um, the XAML thing is is kind of odd. <laughs> I remember seeing how powerful XAML can be uh, when it was first demoed, actually, when it first came out. It can do some very um, incredible things. It is a declarative um, user interface, which some people prefer to build their user interfaces like that by being able to declare what your user interface looks like, which seems backward step to me, but there you go. But uh, one, one thing that it does do is um, provide some uniformity so that um, your app fits in uh, no matter what. Um, because everything UI3 will look bad or good, depending on uh, you know what your update is and things like that. The one thing I think it does do is that you know if you hover over the maximize button, I think if it's using the later UI um, controls, then in Windows 11 you get these little this little grid to allow you to snap uh, windows. It used to be a um, a power toys feature but it's now become a yeah. windows 11 the, 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 the snap window thing works for vcl applications as well what is it yeah yeah yeah, yeah i'm pretty certain uh, i tested oh. it and was it working does, yeah. So, yeah because that's a core operating system thing even oh, style application okay. which is more a little more tricky because we it depends on the on the on the non-client hit information so yeah, yeah. as long as you have an 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 a non-client element that that says, hey, I'm maximized, whatever it's painted, uh, then it, it should work. So yeah, it, it's more broad. But no, I mean, WinUI has, has specific features that are worth. And for us, it's important to allow developers to hook into, call any platform API, 
uh, whether it's WinRT, whether it's traditional, whether it's COM, whether it's the desktop integration. That's been a, a key point in Delphi. And for some time, like WinUI 2, it wasn't accessible because you could technically use the APIs, but they would just crash if the application wasn't managed, wasn't built with, with C Sharp ultimately, because C++ was in the C++, um, even Microsoft C++ was in the same boat. Uh, now they're opening up those technologies. They were signed exclusively for this WinRT world to make it them available for the traditional Windows API world, like, like Delphi and C++ really are. So, so that, yeah. it's interesting to support them. Then it's up to the developers to decide the, for, the, for me, the thing about Delphi is when someone comes to me and, you know, as a, you know, I'm self-employed, I write programs for other people. Uh, when someone says they want to have a program written, the answer is yes, I can do it in Delphi. What, what do you need? And, uh, and that's the thing that Delphi offers any choice that I can make. If someone wants me to, uh, I mean, once we start supporting WinUI 3, it allows me to say, okay, well, if you really want to do WinUI 3, then we'll do that. But if not, I can do it in FireMonkey and, and it'll look very cool under all sorts of uh, cross-platform uh, operating systems. Oh, you want to do a web app? Yeah, we can do that. Oh, you want to do a, a VCL app that's nice and tight and very close to the metal and, and uh, is almost immune to operating system quirks and some runtime not being installed, then we can do a VCL. And that, that for me is the key thing about Delphi is, my income depends on being able to say yes to someone's request for a program and delphi is the strength behind that it's my superpower that allows me to say yeah of course i can write a program that does that for you uh, yeah that, that, that's how it works really it's uh it's uh, it's not it's not difficult <laughs> i i, I figure to get someone to say can i do this in delphi and the answer is always yes yeah <laughs> it's, it's always a matter of like how much effort is going to be uh realistically I, I, actually um my wife will come to me and say, is there a way to do, and she, well, she's trying to figure out how to say it, I'll say, yes, there's a way to do it. I just don't know how much effort can be involved yet. <laughs> Someone showed me an Excel spreadsheet with a VB macro built into it that was doing some, uh, I don't want to say too much because I was over there in the UK and it was there, but uh, they had a, a macro that was extracting some information from an accounts package create a bunch of CSV files and then manipulate them in Visual Basic scripting and then exporting it into a CRM that was uh, running MySQL in all sorts of bizarre ways. It was completely broken. It would end up with the um, the Excel files being locked. And, uh, and uh, they said, any chance you can replace this? I'm like, yes, absolutely. And, and you know, it'll be fully automated. You won't have to open a spreadsheet and run macros or things like that. You'll just have a little service that will run and it'll do all that because that's what Delphi does. That kind of stuff, it does very well. It's a, it's a, it's a strength, you know, of, of the product. So I know I I'm an MVP and you'd expect me to be positive, but, you know, I'm a realist. I am a programmer. I have to earn my money by writing programs and uh, I'm not going to choose a dubbed language. I, I'm going to choose the one that does what I need it to do. That's right. So, works for me. David, there's a few questions here about a Mac OS or Linux version of the IDE. Uh, I know we had something we've talked about. I know there's nothing on the roadmap, but I don't know if you wanted to weigh in on that. There's not much I can say there, unfortunately. Um, we do get regular questions about that, as as, as you say, um, but uh, you know, nothing on the roadmap, um, unfortunately. Yeah, it, it, it's something we're looking at. It, it, it's it's complicated, unfortunately. We do have the um, uh, what's it called? VS Code LSP add-in. Is there? Is that something we've looked at making available cross-platform? Uh, that's true. So, um, and if you missed this, by the way, um, uh, your Adobe LSP LSP is uh, you know the, the the code completion, the code insight engine for for Adobe. Um, and if you haven't tried Code Insight in one of the newer versions of Delphi, give it a go. It's um, pretty good, we think, we hope. <laughs> give it a go for sure. Um, and uh, yeah, we, we actually have a plugin for Visual Studio Code for, for Windows, um, so you can use the same Code Insight engine there. Um, and you're right, we, we have thought about uh, moving that across to, to other platforms. Um, again, nothing on the roadmap though that I can currently discuss. Um, but if that's something you're interested in, drop us an email. Um, I'm sure my email will be on the screen at the end of this um, or at the beginning, uh, david.mellington at embarkadero.com. Always interested to hear about interest in, in this kind of topic. 
Um, I think the key message there, though, is uh, you know the engines and technology that we're using is um, uh, very cool. So uh, you know, even if it's only on Windows, check out the, uh, you know the tech that we we have today. Um, so the comment here about Skia for Delphi being native with future versions of Delphi. It, it's available via Get It Now, although I don't think it's updated to version three. We'll have to work on that. Um, it's something we've, you know, it's possible. I don't know. <laughs> I, yeah, it's I, something we've discussed. Yeah. Honestly, I mean, I, I love uh, it's it's convenient when it's in the box, as it were. But the fact that it can be easily added or you know be available externally, I think it, it is uh, is is great as well. So, it's a very easy install that finds your IDE and plonks itself into your IDE, and it was completely painless. Uh, for me, you just go to the uh, GitHub uh, installation, uh, GitHub page, and uh, run the installer, and it it'll detect your IDE, install itself in your IDE, and off you go. I I, I don't I'm lazy. I don't want to do anything difficult. <laughs> you know, it it works and it works smoothly. This is why they're the spirit of Delphi guys, because uh, they're, what they've done is quite remarkable. I, I I mean, I'm very proud of all the people that we have in the community. You know, there are a lot of good authors out there, and people like Holger Flick. Uh, I mean, personal friend of mine, but he he writes tons of books. But there's a lot of people out there that are working very hard behind the scenes that aren't quite as talkative as myself, and and uh, and are more shy and don't like being on camera and things like that. Working very very hard behind the scenes, and these guys, um, you know, the uh, the Barbosa brothers behind the Skier for Delphi, have put a lot of work in to make sure that it does work, and and. Um, and uh, they're not the only ones. There's plenty of people out there, you know, just chugging away. A good community, but we're very good at being successful silently. And uh, people talk more. If you use Delphi, go and tell people, hey, I use Delphi for my apps. And let people know, you know. Actually, uh, so someone commented, Alistair Christie does a lot of great videos. And uh, yeah, other people's like, well, why didn't so-and-so get a spirit of Delphi? Honestly, <laughs> it's so hard picking. <laughs> One of the things I look for is I try and look for people I feel like that are doing a great job, maybe not as visible as well, right? And so Dave Nottage is does all, he's so busy doing everything else that we just don't see him that much. Uh, he doesn't talk as lot as much. Uh, he's been on some podcasts and blogs and stuff like that as well. But uh, so that's why we picked him and then the guys from Kia for Delphi because they're they're too busy writing code to to do much beyond that. So. Yeah. Uh, comment here about question about Raspberry Pi support. So there is in the oh, um, a Blaze Pascal magazine has a their current issue that just came out shows how to install Windows 11 on Raspberry Pi and run Delphi applications and Delphi IDE even on it. So yeah. <laughs> It works on oh, Raspberry Pi. Yeah, I'm not sure bad, bad. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> no, no, no. If you have a big enough Raspberry Pi, you can run Delphi on it. <laughs> a farm. A, a, a Raspberry Pi server farm would do it, I think. Hey, you know what? Uh, but whilst we're on here, we should also mention TMS Miletus, which is their um kind of uh uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, electron competitor, I suppose, would be the way of looking at. And they have some very good examples of running. Uh, they can target uh, Raspberry Pi with their uh, TMS um, FNC uh, components and uh, and uh, with the Miletus uh, runtime. And that that allows you to write Delphi apps that are virtually unchanged. Um, there you go uh, on the screen now, and that will uh, that will that's actually web core, but they uh, they do support the FNC controls in as well, which are the framework neutral components, I think they call them. And uh, there are some examples of targeting Raspberry Pi, and it works. It works very very well. Um, so if you if you've ever had someone say, hey, why can't we ship something in a Raspberry Pi black box? You know, some application that you want as a kiosk application, or you know, maybe a restaurant. Uh, um, POS system or something like that, or even um, a TV management uh, piece of software or something like that. You could have a little Raspberry Pi in a little black box, cost you $20 or whatever it is in the US or £30 in the UK. Put your uh, your Delphi programs on and off you go. 
this is yet another um, target for Delphi. We're already everywhere that counts, and uh, and the Raspberry Pi is quite important. I, I'm not sure I'd want to run Windows 11 on my Raspberry Pi, to be fair. <laughs> Pretty certain I don't want to run the ID on it. <laughs> Unless they've got more powerful than the last couple of months when I saw them recently. But yeah, my liter. So I've got, got a lot of good things to say about that. It's, it's not fat and bloated like uh, the the um, Electron stuff is. I mean, we, we I'm not, I am not really hate Electron. I don't like it at all. You run an Electron app and it consumes half your machine for breakfast. Um, whereas the my liter stuff, as far as I can see, is not like that. So... Good luck to TMS. I think it's a brave decision to go in that direction. It's a lot of work, um, but it does seem to work. You know, it's a, it's a, a raspberry Merry Christmas. What a brilliant pun. I wish I'd thought of that headline. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, I just shared that on the, on the thing. Actually, and I did want to point out, so they have a Delphi 27 blog post here, but they, uh, Stephanie, one of their new interns, she talks about her experience with Delphi here, so check that out. They've... Uh, Someone was asking about new people to Delphi. Um, my nephew just recently got working in IT and cybersecurity, and he had this job, and he's like, I need a utility that does a quick and easy way to manage a bunch of clips that I can do when I'm doing support calls. And I'm like, oh, that's easy in Delphi. And he's like, really? I said, yeah. And so I just got on, and we spent like an hour together and made an application that now works for him in Delphi. And he is so excited about that and is got all these great ideas about other stuff he wants to do with it's Delphi. such an easy language to use i don't know why people go and oh i'll do it in c sharp oh async await this and this just drives me crazy i can write in about nine <laughs> different programming languages but why would i choose anything on the delphi which is it was invented to teach people programming for goodness sake i mean you can't get much more straightforward than that it's uh and okay yeah there's some complicated things you can set up if you really want to but if you just write in straightforward programs drag and drop the components on add a small amount of code nothing particularly dramatic and off you go you're an application developer why are you not using delphi stop it start using delphi don't know the complicated <laughs> i'm a big guy do i have to start threatening people i'm my professional <laughs> so here's a Oh, let me share our screen again. This is the Blaze Pascal issue 101. Does have re Raspberry Pi with Windows 11. Um, I'll put the link in here in the chat. So check that out if you want to see Raspberry Pi. Lots of great Raspberry Pi opportunities. C yeah, looks actually, like actually Glenn like was Delphi. mentioning that uh, with Android 11, you should be able to be able to run Windows on Android. So basically run Windows on your phone and so run Delphi on your phone. I'm not, I don't think I'm looking forward to it, but. <laughs> <laughs> Just because you, you need a big phone. You should. <laughs> <laughs> but surviving on nothing but cake. I mean, theoretically it's probably possible, but I don't think it's a very good policy overall. Yeah. Good, yeah. But eventually something. I've going. used Delphi for when well, like with, with remote with VNC over like a Google desktop, but if really need an emergency, but it's not really like a nice experience using Windows app on on, on a phone with, with the finger. Mm -mm. Mm. Yeah, I saw a, um, a video on someone installed Windows 11 on their Android phone and they're like, it can run everything. I'm Star Wars for stuff. And I'm like, oh, I wonder if I can install Delphi. Probably can, but yeah, it's probably not a good idea. But you have to keep it in a freezer to stop it burning a hole through your leg. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, actually, he did add a external um, cooling system for it. Cooling system so, to a phone. <laughs> yeah, he had to attach an external cooler for it. So someone's asking about building for Ubuntu. Uh, I did a webinar, and here's the replay link for windows subsystem for linux which actually goes into uh it's i mean windows subsystem for linux if you're not familiar with it is a full-on linux kernel on windows and so uh this is focused on windows subsystem for linux but everything or most everything i cover in there you can do on regular linux as well where it runs um, on ubuntu definitely i've got apps yeah. that run under ubuntu so uh okay so I, we're kind of just chatting right now as a couple are asking how much longer is this going to go <laughs> <laughs> i was hoping to get through some of the questions but they're coming in faster than we can answer it still so uh sorry uh get answer my big intent I, bob i'm sorry i didn't see your big end question <laughs> i i we're spending so much time scrolling through questions and trying to answer them 
but just cannot answer them all. I apologize. So we're not trying, we're not, not trying to ignore anybody here by any means. Uh, just like David said, we, we will try and, and, and get these later. So I don't know what your big question was, Bob, or I'd answer it now. Uh, will Skia for Delphi come native with future versions of Delphi? Maybe. I don't know. Uh, it will be it, it will be in Git at least. Uh, yes, check out the great stuff on Gridgy. Yes, Gridgy does great stuff. I talk about them a lot. I will be making a blog post about them as well. If you're not familiar with Gridgy, they do a lot of great stuff. Their cloud logger and other libraries are really, really useful. Yeah. Uh, let's go around real quick and just... Uh, it, it would give a chance to make some final comments here and then wrap up and then we'll just have to do the rest of it later. Uh, Marco, anything you'd like to wrap up here? I, I see you're answering questions as well. So maybe there's a question you wanted to comment on. No, nothing really in particular besides those I mentioned earlier. It's um, no, it's been a pleasure and it's um, it, it's um, actually great to to be able to have this product grow and uh, and, and continue uh, to 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 be relevant in the industry. Someone was asking, is it um, is that really used uh, and really used in the US? Oh yeah. I mean, unfortunately, at times some of our customers are big enough; they don't want too much publicity of what they're doing. But um, there is at least one major harbor in the US that's driving all of the all of the lift for the containers. Um, with not one Delta application, but <laughs> they have one Delta application and, and one computer for every lift, and they can move like like twenty some something like twenty containers real time at the same time with all of the security checks you have in that case, and it's hundred percent Delphi code uh, and the control system, the individual individual PCs and so forth. That's just one thing, but in in engineering in general, uh, or or controlling the the Nagar fault lights or um, or designing CPUs. Some people are using, actually a lot of people are using Delphi application to design CPUs. So it's it's really a lot that's happening out there in the US and a lot happening out there around the world from Italy where I'm based on, around Europe, um, in, in the Nordic regions, uh, in Asia, in Japan. Japan is really big on Delphi and C++ Builder as well. Um, it, it's big in Australia, it's big in South America, it's certainly very big in South America, starting with Brazil and many other countries. Um, it's getting very big in China, even if don't, we don't have that many paying customers, but pay is big anyway. <laughs> and uh, it is really it is really a relevant, uh, a relevant tool. Uh, there is a lot of software being written more than it's visible because some type people don't don't care about advertising it, but there are there are, there are trains running in Delphi. There are lots of things happening in 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 um, in, in many different industries. Uh, there is a lot in the real time because if you're doing real time, you don't you don't really want to go C sharp, .NET, Java, JavaScript, Python, and other things because you need reliability on 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 the response times and you need quick response times in and invariably quick response times. Um, so that's that's where Delphi has and remains an advantage. You can use C and C plus plus, of course, as well, but um, but Delphi has 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 a significant role there. But it's it's in many other areas. It's it's in accounting, it's in finance, it's in real time system for trades. It's in in blockchain. It's in a lot of places that that you'd be surprised to know. And I am surprised to know when I, when I find out from customers <laughs> what what is what it's used for. Um, I was talking with a company saying, yeah, we built these utilities for, for to monitor computer performance and say, okay, yeah, nice. And we need to make this change and say, okay, yeah, but if you do that change, you'll need to redeploy the application. Oh, say our application is currently deployed on probably 100 million devices. Uh, how do we update it? Okay. Now I see you have a problem. Yeah, okay. Uh, so it, it was, I mean, it's something that was with me very easy on a small scale, but if you have a hundred million people using your stuff, then uh, it's a problem. But hey, that's a Delphi app that is used by hundred million people. Wow, that's a lot. Yeah, I used to work for a computer manufacturer. We shipped the Delphi apps with every computer we sold and it was quite a few of them. Yeah, that's the kind of thing you're supposed to support and, um, 
and, and embedded by so they sell to the hardware vendors that embed it for for the support mechanism so monitoring and checking configurations and th that, that's just one example but yeah we we can we can name names uh, that that's that that's acceptable but um, no it is it is used a lot D don't worry about that <laughs> well we we have about four to five million people in the UK and the US who every day they go to work and they clock in and they don't know they're actually clocking in uh, with the Delphi program. And, uh, and we deploy those in a way that is kind of sell and forget, you know, <laughs> and now uh, we can do that because we know that the product's going to be reliable. And lots of people out there are clocking in and clocking out with hand scanners, fingerprint scanners, face scanners, and, uh, you know, the traditional little uh, key tags and stuff like that. And, and we, we worked out it's at least four and a half to five million employees. And if that's in the UK, that's actually probably something like 10 percent of the working population of the UK. And they are they don't know they're they're uh, clocking in on a on a system that's backed by Delphi. So, uh, yeah, you're all using Delphi. Did you know that? You don't know it, but uh, that's what it's doing. <laughs> Yeah, I actually I gotta share a story. More than once I have done some consulting work for somebody and written a program in Delphi and then or Delphi, people are commenting about pronunciation. Either one's fine. And um years <laughs> later, they contact me and they're like, Oh, I need you to update this. I'm like, oh, I forgot you're still running that? And they're like, Yeah, it's working great. And I'm like, it's still running. <laughs> I was one time I built a server, a back end server, and I had a, a bunch of clients that were mobile that were uh running on, on uh, laptops connecting this backend server. And it was still running, plugging away. He says that he reboots the server occasionally, but for the most part, it just works. And upgraded operating systems and installing new stuff, and it just kept plugging away and running. And I'm like, wow, I <laughs> I don't even remember working on this. It was so long ago, but it was just still running away, doing its job. It does such a, it's it's very resilient, very robust language, I think, for that. So I like uh, Yes, yes, absolutely. Uh, David, anything you wanted to add? Uh, sure, look, um, I'm just uh, really happy with all the, the comments and stuff that are coming through and I want to echo other people that we couldn't reply to all of them, but, but we will read all of them and, and thank you for all of that. Um, there's you know, a whole bunch of questions and also comments and stories about using Delphi and success and that kind of thing. And it's, um, it's actually really nice in these webinars when people write in things like that. It's, it's really good to you know, when you work here, you put in a lot of effort, uh, of course, as you do in, in any workplace, but it's, it's really nice to, to see the impact of, of what you do um, and, and hearing from you like that. So, so thank you for, for all of those. Um, I also just want to say, um, you know, shout out again to the uh, the award winners today, Sir Dave Nottage, um, and uh, forgive me for forgetting um, the names. Perhaps you can bring the slide up again, Jim, um, because Dave Nottage does amazing work uh, with his libraries, especially Custry. And Skier is something that uh, internally we've you know, kept an eye on for, for some time. It's, it's very impressive. Um, you know, we, uh, you know, and, and they did watch, yeah, by the way. They've, they've definitely been, been watching that and uh, you know, admiring the, um, the technology that's, that's been built. Thank you, Paolo and uh, Vinicius. Um, you know, so, so to all three of you, Dave, Paolo and Vinicius, um, you know, congratulations from us. That's all very, very well deserved. And this is 2021, it's for the last year. So 2022 Spirit of Delphi Award winner will be awarded in 2023. Um, like I said, I wanted to award it at the end of the year, but yeah, like the Oscars, exactly. It's the big start of the next year you award for the previous years, exactly. They love the um, Oscars. <laughs> yeah. And there was a question about, uh, so you can still download Delphi One client server, Turo Pascal versions, Turo Pascal. I need to uh, probably update a download links for these, but those are still available as well. Uh, someone was asking about that. Uh, Ian, you're, you're good at jumping in. And, uh, <laughs> you have something to I, say. I don't but, really have much more to say. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I just want to, I mean, as, as a fellow Delphi programmer, which is kind of how I would position myself, I too am very pleased to see positive feedback. Most people don't ever, um, nobody, wants to email to congratulate you, you know it's usually people who've got a problem or co complain and so you know like all technical support jobs and things like that nobody ever phones up technical support to say hey i just want to say everything's working fine <laughs> uh, that doesn't happen so it's nice to see um, positive feedback from people 
and particularly about Skier um, as well. You know, they're saying, hey, great demo. That was the work of the um, the Barbosa brothers. Um, uh, all I do is just show it. It's, I, I'm good at presenting it and talking about it. Um, but they're doing all the hard work. So really, all the credit goes to those guys. And uh, and I'll see you around and about, everybody, and fellow Delphi programmers. Let's all keep coding in Delphi and C++ Builder. And, uh, and uh, we know the secrets. We just need to keep telling people, hey, this is what we do. It's how we write our programs. We do it every day. They work. And we, we think you should try Delphi too. Yep. Yeah, so do, if you want to, I'll, I'll actually throw this slide up here. If you do want to blog or tweet or whatever about Delphi, include the hashtag Delphi 27th, and I will try and do a blog post to kind of um, uh, wrap, do a roundup of a lot of stuff. There's a lot of great stuff came from the MVPs as well that I'll be sharing too. So thank you, everybody. As David said, it is so great to see uh, your feedback. Kyle mentioned it too. Just seeing people show up for these webinars, your positive feedback. And I used to work in tech support years ago. And like Ian was saying, people don't call tech support to say thanks. It's all working good. <laughs> uh, so unfortunately, sometimes we see you know bug, more bug reports than we see it's working. But the reality is we have to remember that uh, more people don't report bugs than do. <laughs> because it is working for the most part. It's perfect. Yeah. Thank you. And I will do my best to get this uh, question log available on the uh, on the, the replay too. So thank you, everybody. Thanks a lot. Bye bye. Happy birthday, Delphi. <laughs> bye, everybody. Sorry, my webcam's not working.